and welcome to Picture This, a podcast from the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum. My name is Jill Hartke, and I am the digital archivist here at the museum. Today we are going out to the ball game with the Albuquerque Dukes minor league baseball team. In the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum are photographs of the Albuquerque Dukes from the 1940s and 1950s. They were the longest running professional franchise in Albuquerque, and they had some big names associated with them throughout the years. Here's the story behind the photographs. The sport of baseball has always been a part of Albuquerque. Before any professional team came to town, Albuquerque had the Browns, who began playing in the 1880s inside the racetrack of the fairgrounds near Old Town. Other local baseball teams included the Albuquerque Maroons, who were champions of the Southwest in 1891. The railroad started its own baseball team in the 1890s, and not long after, Old Town got its Tigers. <laughs> By the 1930s, the fire department had its own baseball team. Community centers fielded peewee teams. Businesses like Coca-Cola and the Jones Motor Company sponsored teams. All over town, backyards and vacant lots became ballparks, and the game of baseball was part of everyday life. Despite the sport's popularity, professional baseball was slow to arrive. In 1915, the first professional baseball team arrived in Albuquerque. It was the Dukes. However, they didn't last long. They only played one season. Professional baseball didn't return for 17 years. In 1932, it returned with the Albuquerque Dons, who took first place in their league. But then the league disbanded. In 1937, the Albuquerque Cardinals arrived as an affiliate of the St. Louis Cardinals, and opening day brought scores of people to Tingley Field to watch them play. The Cardinals came in third place that year, but they won the Arizona-Texas League Championship Series. They lasted longer than any professional team had so far. They stayed a full five years, leaving in 1941. The Dukes reappeared in 1942, but their timing was off. Baseball stadiums around the country went quiet during World War II, and Albuquerque was no different. In 1946, the players and fans returned to the ballparks. The Albuquerque Dukes of the 1940s and 1950s played for different major league affiliates, including the New York Giants and the Cincinnati Reds. In the 1950s, future New Mexico Governor and United States Senator Pete Domenici pitched for the Albuquerque Dukes for one season. The Dukes were part of the Texas League, which folded entirely in 1958, leaving Albuquerque once again without a professional baseball team. In the 1960s, the Kansas City Athletics revived the Dukes for the third time, but it was also short-lived. Finally, in 1963, the Albuquerque Dukes and the Los Angeles Dodgers struck up a partnership that would allow Albuquerque to have professional baseball consistently for decades to come. The Los Angeles Dodgers renamed the Dukes the Albuquerque Dodgers for the first nine seasons of their 38-year partnership before returning to the name Albuquerque Dukes in 1972. A new stadium was built for the team called Albuquerque Sports Stadium, which included a drive-up area just beyond right field so fans could watch games from their cars. On opening day in 1969, the San Francisco Giants and the Cleveland Indians came to Albuquerque to play an exhibition game at the brand new stadium. The first player up to bat was Willie Mays. The new stadium was like a breath of fresh air for the city of Albuquerque, and the following decade was a boon for the sport in town. Future Hall of Fame manager Tommy Lasorda took over management of the Albuquerque Dukes in 1972, and he led the team to the Pacific Coast League Championship, the first of eight that the Dukes would win over the coming decades. 
Lasorda soon became manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and Duke's players followed him to the big leagues, helping the Los Angeles Dodgers win pennants in the late 1970s. In 1981, the Major League Baseball Players' Strike created an opportunity for the Albuquerque Dukes. The Los Angeles Dodgers needed to prepare to re-enter baseball when the strike was over. Lasorda asked the Dukes to play an exhibition game in Los Angeles. The game was televised nationally, and the announcer was Don Drysdale. The Dukes spent the pregame signing autographs for the legions of Los Angeles fans, who were excited to see their veterans against the new up-and-comers from Albuquerque. It was the largest stage the Dukes had been on. They stood tall. The Albuquerque Dukes beat the Los Angeles Dodgers one to nothing. The Dodgers would recover from their loss and go on to win the World Series that season. The Albuquerque Dukes not only brought professional baseball to Albuquerque, but they allowed a city to root for a team playing a sport that they loved. The Dukes provided a chance for New Mexicans to see big leaguers close to home. Over the years, Albuquerque baseball fans watched Mike Piazza, Pedro Martinez, Daryl Strawberry, and Chan Ho Park all play for the home team. The Albuquerque Dukes left the city in 2000 after growing dissatisfied with the Albuquerque Sports Stadium, which was then the oldest stadium in the Pacific Coast League. The franchise was sold, and the Dukes moved to Portland, Oregon, and became the Portland Beavers. It was a couple of years before professional baseball returned to Albuquerque in the form of the Albuquerque Isotopes. Albuquerque Sports Stadium was demolished, and Isotope Stadium rose on the same site, ushering in our current era of professional baseball. Nods to Albuquerque baseball history can be found at Isotopes Park, including the large baseball that first sat in front of Tingley Field in the 1930s. The current field is still the same field where Tommy Lasorda managed the Dukes and where Willie Mays took that first at bat in Albuquerque Sports Stadium. Thank you for joining us for Picture This with the Albuquerque Museum. Join us next time for the story behind another photograph in the museum's collection.